This is the traditional talk about Utopida. Uh, and as, as it happens, we released OTP 25.0 yesterday. It was a coincidence. <laughs> and here you see the plan that we plan to release the next May release next May. And I hope it's a conference the day after that time too. And we, we have the ordinary service releases in September, uh, December, and March for the 25 track. And then we start all over with release candidates for the 26 track. So now I'm going to talk about some highlights in the release. Then. Here you see a list of uh, some highlights. I will dig deeper into some of them. For example, this one, new functions in lists and maps. Uh, it's not uh, so often that we have new functions here in these modules. They are quite stable. But now we have here maps groups from list. It will take a list as input. And it will uh, return a map with the, the, the groups uh, from, from, the from the input list. In, in this case, it is the length of the, the strings that is the category here. That can be quite useful. Then we have list enumerate, which just uh, uh, tells you what, what ordinal number each element in the input list has and returns a tuple with number and element. And we have list unique that uh, removes duplicates from a list and returns them in in the the they preserve the order in the result. We have another function lists uh, use sort today, which returns them in a sorted order instead. Quite useful. Then we have a new concept here about feature called features. It's a mechanism uh, which let you use a new feature in, in just the module you choose to use it in, and it will have no impact on the other modules. In this example, for you have this feature directive inside the module telling that you want to use or enable this feature, and by using that you can get, the new, for example, a new syntax allowed in, in your module. Uh, cons also will talk uh, more about futures, features tomorrow. So it will be a com dedicated talk about features tomorrow. One or the fir first feature to use this new feature concept is this maybe expression. It has been suggested al already 2018 and now, finally, it is implemented. So the maybe feature is a new uh, block, just like begin end, which can have uh, expressions inside. And the new thing here is that it can have the match or return operator. It's a new operator. And it means like match or return if if it doesn't match, it will return the other value that didn't match and, ex and exit the maybe end block directly. Then there is another optional else you can have here also. Uh, and then you will return to the else and then you can match on what happened there and uh, decide what to return from the maybe end block. And this maybe construct could be used to avoid massive ne nested cases. This, an this is an ugly example of a nested case where you in the middle have, have the actual return. The interesting value is, is the one in the middle there. With maybe you can write it like this instead. 
it's really easy. You follow the flow and you return the result in the end. Another interesting thing in OTP25 is more improvements in the, of the JIT. For example, the support for ARM64 architecture. Uh, it's also better code generation based on types. And it's better support for perf and GDB. I'll show you some examples here. The ARM64 architecture, it's used in Apple Silicon Max, for example, or newer Raspberry Pi. Here is an example with a benchmark from the base 64 encode and decode functions. The blue uh, bars here indicates how many iterations you can do with a JIT, and the red ones are how many iterations without the JIT. So you can see that encode is about 2.5 times faster, and uh, decode is, I mean, 75% faster. The perf support, well, by using the GP perf true flag to Erlang when you start it, uh, you will use uh, some frame pointers, which makes perf happy, and you will also communicate the uh, line number information about Erlang code. So you can actually run with this switch on all the time. It will not cost much in performance, and it will maybe cost one, one word per recurs recursion. But while having that, you can get nice reports of various kinds from perf. You can attach perf to running Erlang system as well. In this case, we have started dialyzer under perf. And then you can get some nice data out of that. Uh, with a mix of C functions and uh, Erlang functions and the relation between them. <coughs> Crypto is quite used in, in OTP, and it relies on OpenSSL. And OpenSSL has come with a 3.0 release, which it is their new platform, you could say. It has a new API, so it has been quite some work to, to support it. But now, in OTP25, we support OpenSSL 3.0, and we are then quite future-proof about following the OpenSSL development. CR certificates uh, is things you need when you connect to, to servers. And uh, to simplify the use here, we have uh, implemented a way of fetching the CR search from the standard place of the operating system. So you have a function, CR search get in public key, where you can get the search, and then you can just use them in SSL Connect, or, or you will soon be able to use them in, in the HTTP client as well. Yes. So that was some highlights from the release. Uh, we will continue the work then for the next big release, and uh, uh, we will continue work on uh, tools for checking, finding faults early. Dialyzer is one of those tools. We'll f see if we can find something else as well. I mean, this is not a promise that we do everything about this, but we, uh, we are considering doing things in these areas. We will improve documentation and how to configure systems. Of course, more improvements in the compiler and JIT area. And uh, 
we have a socket module which is aimed to replace the current inet driver but first we have to fix that it's okay, supported on all platforms for example windows but our drive is to make it the default sooner or later we'll work more with tls and ssh improvements uh, new language features perhaps if we can decide which ones to go for a project build model how to build airline and improvements in the shell like completion of various kinds so i want to thank all, all, all contributors i think we have a, a increasing trend of contributions you can see here the trend is growing here the number of uh, created pull requests 2021 was around 800 and it takes some effort for the OTP team to, to handle them some ones are tricky and some ones are just to merge here is you see that OTP version 3 I just want to show you a very useful piece of information that's available with this with this web page you can see all releases and patches that we have done and what they contain you can expand this view and you can see what each release contains in terms of uh, OTP applications it's very useful when you are tracking down okay I got a problem in this release but it doesn't appear in this release what's changed That's it. On, on the bigger level then you can go into git of course and take the detail level we I use it a lot when we have troubleshooting in with customers and so on. so and here is some more info about the release you can read can have read a blog about OTP highlights there are specific blog posts about a faster random number generator type optimizations in the JIT and uh, the complete readme information for the OTP 25 release so that's all I have to say if you don't have questions perhaps I think I have kept the time, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kenneth. Big hand. ODP 25. Yay! <laughs> and we have our first question from the Hoover app. This is a tricky one, Ken Kenneth. Are you ready? Okay. Why is this technology so amazing <laughs> <laughs> oh, that and that was not for me okay okay that was a tricky question <laughs> um, what should I say it, it make I mean Erlang makes it easy and productive to write programs of many kinds I mean my experience is that you can do a lot with just one person instead of having a team of five or so.